Hey, everybody, light the beam, 108.96, and I start off with a tribute to Domantas Sabonis. What an incredible year, 54 consecutive double-doubles, breaking Kevin Love's record. Sabonis brings it every single night. Big way to open up the homestand with the Mavs in town tomorrow. This is the post game on If You Don't Like That, and in a moment, Ryan in Sacktown. Sacramento missed you. Carter. Stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like NBA basketball. Fox. Goodbye. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. The exclamation point from the Eric Fox. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like NBA That's an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa. Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That was a major league smush. So, Rhino, the uh, Sixers are in the books as the W and uh, showdown one of two tomorrow night, and that's going to be a dandy. But we talk about this game, and how about Sabonis? What a season he's having. It's incredible. Three names with the amount of double, or triple doubles in this season. 25, and I know he's did the double-double record tonight. Wilt, Jokic, Sabonis. Hey, how about that? And Oscar Robertson. And Well, no, 25 or more triple doubles in a oh, season. Wilt, gotcha. Sabonis, gotcha. Joker. Gotcha. Yeah, but Grant, you lead me right to the next question. Where does yeah. this stand in individual accomplishments in Sacramento? king's history it's right up there near the top in my opinion um it's right up there at the top i mean i was there beginning in 1988 i watched the team in person in 87 but in all of the years that i covered the kings uh, it, it's 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 right up there near the top i mean i'm a big believer and you know this about consistency mm-hmm. see to me yes. consistency is the maybe the the number one thing i look at when i judge an athlete Who's more consistent than him? He's 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 arguably the most consistent player in the league. Yeah, and he's got so much room still to grow. Look at his game. I mean, if you think about improving a jump shot, that's maybe one of the easier things to learn. Not saying it's easy, uh-huh. but easier. So, I mean, just to think about what he's done now, and Grant, really, him and Jokic, they're kind of trying to say, give us back our position. Well, uh, all I can tell you is he's fun to watch. He's not about me, me, me. He's yes. the ultimate team guy. I mean, he he has all the intangibles that I look forward in a player. I mean, I, I, I love everything about the guy. I, his work ethic, the way he goes about his job. I, I really enjoy I enjoy that. It's a it's a very it's a great change. It's a breath of fresh air to me. Hundred percent. And uh, is there anybody that's got her chin that you ever seen in the NBA? <laughs> yeah, he got oh, hit hard man. early, didn't he? <laughs> Four times in the face. So there's this like thing around town now. It's a drinking game. If he gets hit in the face, you drink. Well, apparently. Um, I'm glad I I'm glad I'm not aware of that game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you can oh do my water. Gosh. I mean, I don't know. Oh, but, yeah. wow. Oh, good man. stuff. All right. So again, 108 to uh, 96. Tony, I keep on seeing your messages. Kevin Herter's not coming back this year, okay? So don't count on it, all right? I mean, don't worry about him coming back, okay? If he comes back, great, but don't count on it. Uh, the the Kings get the W after that horrible, horrible game in Washington. They bounce back with two really good performances, Orlando and then here tonight against Philadelphia. Yeah, Grant, what are we watching defensively? 96 points they hold the Sixers to. Yeah, I mean, love it. Love it. It's going to win you a lot of games. Is it here to stay, though? Do you think it's here to stay? Well, you know what? There's a lot of games left, and they're all against good teams for the most part. So we're going to find out. Uh, The proof is in the pudding, right? Absolutely. I I love what I'm seeing. And Grant, this Dallas team rolling into town, they've won 8-9. No slouches.
Yeah, no, they're playing very well. And uh, they have two big time stars and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and they're coexisting right now. They are playing well and they played tonight. They beat the Jazz. They understand that these two games are as big for them as they are for Sacramento. They also understand that they've already lost twice to the Kings. So there's a lot riding on these next two games. Make no mistake about it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the Kings are getting a little bit used to this grinded out style, but coming into tonight, three teams te- tied at 29 losses. So two yeah. games in the loss column, that's huge over the next couple. With the Kings. Huge. And if you beat Dallas yeah. one of the two, you you also own the tiebreaker. Yeah, you, you've said that a couple of times and you're spot on because that's what it might come down to when yes. it comes to the sixth seed. Yes. It's been that tight this year. Absolutely. Hey, I want to tell you about New Works Plumbing. They've got a fix for you for all of your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to SACServicePlumbing.com or call the number on your screen. And remember, if you happen to have an emergency at an odd hour, no problem. New Works Plumbing will be there with their 24-7 service. Again, plumbing needs, repairs, they've got you covered. Just go to SACServicePlumbing.com or call the number on your screen. 108 to 96, the final. The Kings get the win. Now, I would also add this. At halftime, uh, I talked about all the minutes that the Mavs starters played. Luka played 40. Luka, uh, Kyrie, I think, had 39. Well, the Kings, same thing. Fox, 37. Murray, 38. Sabonis, 33. So it's even Steven really there in terms of minutes played by the main guys. Yeah, it's a good point. And I would even tip the advantage a little bit to the Kings because over this last 9, 10, 11 game stretch, the physicality they've played with, Dallas doesn't play with a lot of physicality, Grant. But on the flip side, they've got Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. Yeah, I actually favor the Mavs tomorrow because it's Sacramento's third game in four nights with that cross-country flight. And I think that is going to be an issue tomorrow with the three-point shooting. If you notice, this is one of the few games this year that the Kings have won where they did not shoot the three ball well. You know, that 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 is a uh, a number that I think personally they won't win tomorrow if their three-point shooting is not significantly better than it was in this game. The Kings in this game shot only 10 of 38 for 26%. 10 of 38 tomorrow is not going to win the game. Yeah, but I think 38 attempts could win the game. I, I think you can be more efficient within there. I, I just don't think this team can play that style anymore because they don't have the personnel to get into yeah, no. possessions. I, I agree with that. The, well, we need to go talk more about that. See, attempts. So you're you're talking fewer attempts, but you still need yes. to make a higher percentage than 26%. I don't care what your Correct. attempts are. I understand the point you're trying to make, and it's it's actually very true. Without Herter and without Lyles and without Vazankov, who's been out forever. But, yes, you you this, the, the book would say well, we're not going to shoot as many threes. Mm-hmm. But the percentage still has got to be better. And 100%. 26% is not good. And, Grant, they had the looks tonight, too. It's not yes. like some of the looks were bad. No. Well, and that brings me again to tomorrow. Long night of travel, okay, mm-hmm. getting readjusted, and now you got to be right back at it tomorrow. And I know the Mavs played tonight, but three games in four nights with the travel is very unusual, very unusual. So let's see if that factors into the game tomorrow. I think it will. I'm not saying the Kings won't win, but I disagree with you when you kind of side with the Kings a little bit more tomorrow. I don't. Sure. I think Dallas is has an advantage tomorrow tomorrow based on the Kings. Now, later in the week, I would say, no, there is there that that advantage goes back to Sacramento because they're at home. They match up well against Dallas. I'm more worried about tomorrow's game than I am on Saturday. Yeah, I, I see that point of view. I guess I, I can't look past the first game and worry about the second game because we haven't seen this Kings team play Dallas playing this style. You know, every time the Kings have played them, remember they've shot the three ball super well. Um, in Dallas and not as many free throws, even though the Kings did all right there tonight. So um, I don't know. I I feel like this first one is going to mean a lot to the second one, Grant. I could feel the momentum possibly carrying over with a situation this big. Remember the two games played against the Mavs this year. The first time the Mavs were in Milwaukee the night before while the Kings were already in town. I'd say brutal back to back and the Kings blew them out. The second time the Kings played the Mavs, the Mavs were in Memphis the night before and the Kings were in Dallas waiting for them. 
So they had the advantage and they took full to their liking. They, they did take so. advantage of it. Tomorrow, I think even though both teams play tonight and the travel, Dallas is almost in Sacramento right now. So that that's the the, the travels the travel from Salt Lake to uh Sacramento is an absolute non-factor. Anybody that said Dallas has got to travel time, it's a non-factor. It doesn't matter. The Mavs will be in Sacramento before midnight, and they're not playing the schedule that the Kings have played. I just, again, I'm a little nervous about the attrition factor for the Kings tomorrow, whereas when they play the second game this week, it won't be an issue. It's a very fair point, and uh, rest, 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 recover, recover, recover. Yep. All right. 108.96. Feel free to give us a call. Also, Ryan, you've mentioned the uh, text line is up. So people don't have uh, the time or the whereabouts or they're not comfortable speaking with us. Uh, you can send us a text message. Absolutely. 916-339-374 or 399-384-3748. Oh, Sorry, whoa, 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 I know. What was that? No, 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 no. I know. No. What was that? Yeah. Okay, let's start over. Yeah. Let's start over. Okay. Hi, my name's Ryan, and I'd like to talk for a living. Let me uh, compose myself. All right. You can text the show at 1639937483748. And if you'd like to call the show, you don't have to be on camera. So that's always a plus, too. All right. God, that so was brutal. People say, just post the number. That's what people want. Just post the number. <laughs> just post the number. It's up there. We'll put that up. Uh, let's bring Zach into the conversation. Zach, welcome on. Hey, um, I really like the Kings uh, defense as of this month. And uh, my question is, like, should they make the playoffs? Do you think that that'll like um hold up or do you think that they'll start having to rely more on their offense in the playoffs well i i think you look rely on both in the playoffs you you know you you but generally defense picks up in the playoffs more than offense i'll answer the question that way okay because i don't know like because given how good they've been on defense they're offense you know they haven't been scoring as much you know before all this so like so, i just wonder oh go ahead zach sorry i was just like saying like i was just wondering like when they get to the playoffs like if they're struggling to score like will that i'm just trying to think like will their good defense continue to like cancel out if like if they're in like you know a pressure situation hey, zach, you're at you're at you're asking a question that nobody can answer okay the the, the there is no rhyme or reason from one game to another in the playoffs. They're all different. All you got to do is go back and look at the seven game series that the Kings played with the Warriors. So, I mean, every game is different. Every game is it, it's a it's separate entity. And sometimes you'll have a very low scoring game. And then the next game you'll have a, you know, 130 to 128. There, it, it, you can't just make blanket statements like this. The reality is without Kevin Herter and without Trey Lyles, um, you know, the Kings are playing somewhat of a different style. They, they're they not relying as much on the three. They're a better defensive team because Keon Ellis is a much better defensive player than Kevin Herter, but you do lose offense. I mean, another example tonight, you know, the Kings won a low-scoring game. Well, Kevin Herter, his replacement only had five points. Now, the last game, Ellis contributed, all right, and th they scored against Orlando. Tonight, not so much. So, personally, I like a team that can rely on defense because on nights when you don't shoot the ball, well, you still have a chance to win. Uh, so I, I prefer that. Zach, let me take a stab at this really quick. I, I think the question you're trying to ask is what's the advantage for the Kings going to be and what could the liability be and what's That's in what between? Here's what here's what I would say. The Kings now, they're they're not that offensive burst team defense is going to have to turn into offense for the Kings. So the transition game becomes all the more important for them. They were dominating all night until the fourth quarter. They finished tonight 15-10 in the fast break points. So I think that's what it's going to be. But if the Kings are going to carry through to a series or through a series, it's going to be led by the defense. That offensive pop is gone, Zach. And with uh, Sasha's injury, because it's coming to, to that toward that six month or that six week uh, end of the six week, do you expect him to be back within the next couple of games? 
Well, we thought he'd be back at the beginning of the road trip in Toronto when he was listed as questionable before the game, and he didn't play at all on the road trip and didn't play here. So if I'm reading between the lines, that would tell me that the ankle's just not coming around like they thought, or he may have had a minor setback, because you very rarely would list a player questionable, and then more than a week later, he's still questionable. That That's unusual. Well, Grant, here's the tricky thing, though, that was underreported here in Sacramento. Sasha has actually sprained both ankles. Both ankles. And one of the ankles, he tweaked again. So he's had some ongoing issues all yep. season. So that might add some complexity there. And then Lyles, when is he supposed to be back? Uh, no another really week knows. he'll be reevaluated, correct? Yeah. But that, yeah, but being evaluated, as Ryan knows, but I'm saying yeah. this for everyone that's watching, being reevaluated doesn't mean you come back. It just means you're being reevaluated and they hopefully can nail down a timetable. Personally, again, just my experience of dealing with these things and being around the team and teams, I don't expect him back in the regular season. I'm with you, Napes. I'm 100% with you. Hey, Zach, thank, thank you so much for the call tonight. We appreciate it. Zach, good hearing from you, man. We really appreciate it. I want to tell you about Bennett's and a great place for seafood and steak, prime seafood and steaks at Bennett's. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com, make a reservation, and you can check out the menu and everything else, uh, all of their happy hour specials on apps and drinks, 60 different types of wine available by the glass, and don't forget about their weekend brunch and their weekend prime rib. Just go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. That's Bennett'sRestaurants.com. 108-96, the final. The Kings start off this five-game homestand with a big-time W. A big-time W. And Grant, the text messages are coming through, but do you trust me to read them after I can't even say a number? I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a shot. Here we go. Uh, We're going to go. We're getting a lot of questions about Trey Lyles. So we already kind of addressed that. Let's go to the next one. I think this is a good one. Hey, Ryan, just want to let you know that you have a good command of the English language. Thank you, sir. (laughs) Um, Question about um, Mike Brown and his challenges. Grant, would you have liked to see Mike have an extra challenge? I don't like the challenges being made so early in the game. That's the issue that I have because of the way the system works. If you're wrong, then you don't get a challenge. And, you know, the timeout to me, doesn't really matter unless it's at the end of the game and you get it wrong. But I like to keep that challenge for a real game deciding play. Now there, there could be a difference if let's just say Sabonis in the first half picks up his third foul Mm -hmm. in the second quarter and you know, it's a bad call. Then you can challenge that, 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 that is, I'm okay with that because, you know, for obvious reasons. Absolutely. But, and and but it, I'm, not, it's, I'm not crazy about using challenges in the first half. Yeah. And both coaches no, I hear, tonight, by the way. They did. Great point. Uh, Blake from the uh, 916 says this is a different Dallas team, though. Post trade deadline from earlier in the year, yes. Gafford and Lively duo has been great. Tons of points in the paint now, less yes. reliant on the three. And he brings up a good point, Grant, because I talked about the nine game stretch Dallas is on where they've won eight of nine, they're only shooting the three ball in that stretch just above 32%. That's correct. They have changed. They they, they probably, they, that's a great text. They probably have done more to help their team uh, from the trade deadline than any team in the league. And uh, they, they made some phenomenal moves and it has really paid off. As you said, they're playing so very well, but you know, you look at this team. Okay. And this is the real freaking deal. All right. Like tonight, they only shot, 28% 28% from three, and they were able to win the game. They only had six turnovers in this game tonight. So, you know, they took good care of the ball. Now they were playing the Jazz, and the Jazz yeah. are not that good this year. But, you know, they're, they're, they Dallas has not been beating themselves. I give them a lot of credit. And, you know, I'm looking at some of their numbers tonight. They shoot well from uh, the free throw line. They had 31 assists tonight. They are very active with steals and – you know, they're not going to uh, they're not going to shoot the lights out, but points in the paint. Yeah. You know what? They're much better than they were. No question about that. Yeah. And it screams to me a game that you're going to ru- see a lot of zone defense. You're going to want to make them beat you from beyond the three point line. Number one. Yes. 
Um, and then the other thing is, I don't think Dallas is fourth in the NBA in turnover, so pretty darn good. They love the leather, but yep. I don't think enough teams pressure Kyrie and Luka enough. I think they will. The Kings will tomorrow. They're going to try to. I think they will too. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I'll be interested to see what the game plan is there because Keon gives you that element to let Fox be that free safety at times on the defense. And I'm also going to tell you what's going to really impact. Well, impact's not the right word. Tarnish. You're going to see Luka Doncic complain on every call, and you're probably going to see Fox complain as well. And I hate that, but I think Luka's the worst in the league. Fox was better. Arguing, he's awful. He's terrible. Luka's the worst in the league. It, 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 it's I, I don't like watching a guy play anymore because of that. I'm tired of his whining all the time. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. I, I have to give Fox credit. He was better tonight with the refs. He was yep. much better. Hopefully that uh, yep. continues. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Teddy, welcome to the show. You're on with Grant and Rano. Hey, 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 I'm here. Welcome. Uh, so you guys think if the Keens, Speak up. Okay, if you guys think if the Keens uh, go out early, you think the Keens will blow up the team next year? We can't hear you, Teddy. Uh, do you? Hey, Teddy, I got your question. I'll uh, repeat it really quick to Napes and uh, try to get a better line. We'll bring you back. Uh, the question is, if the Kings don't go on in the playoffs, do you blow it up? If you're Monty McNair in the Kings. If they don't make the playoffs? Yeah, if they don't advance in the playoffs, no. things don't go well in the playoffs. No, if they make the playoffs up? and are competitive, no. You, stick, you stay the course. I think there will be big changes if they don't make the playoffs, but no, no. The, is your opinion. definition of the playoffs the same as you think Vivek's is? Uh, yeah, I think Vivek's definition of the playoffs is to be in one, e either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight after the play-in tournament. That's called making the playoffs. And yes, I do. Do I think the play-in is successful for the owner? No, absolutely not. You got to be one of the top eight teams when it, after the play-in. Sure as hell hope so, Napes. Going to be changes. If not, I can tell you that right now. That'll be interesting. <laughs> Pick a side. It'll be a long, long postseason in Sacramento. That's for sure. But I think people forget the team ran it back. The NBA got better. Yeah, maybe they regressed a little bit, but it, it's going to happen. I don't think it was a lost year whatsoever. Well, the perception is it's going to be a lost year if you're not in the playoffs. I, I don't care. I mean, it's now we keep on talking about this. You could have 48 wins and miss the playoffs this year, which is what the Kings record was last year. And they were the three seed. I think we have all acknowledged the West is much, much better this year than it was last year. Yeah, it's much better. I, I agree. But I still think that if the Kings, I just think that something is going to happen. There's going to be a move that would happen that would possibly change things here in Sacramento. That's why I say that, you know, if they don't make it, it might not be a bad thing because if there's going to be a move made, Grant, don't you think it's right around that time when you're getting ready to make a big decision on key? Uh, you know, I, I don't think you have to make a decision on Keegan. I think he's part of the future for a long time, and I don't think that he's going to be going anywhere. But to, in, a, in a short answer, no, I don't think it's there's any positive at all if the Kings don't make the playoffs. There's no positives to that. Um I think you also are then flirting with losing Malik Monk. I don't know. You know, everybody was talking about the comments that he made a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. He There's there's one important thing that he said that people glossed over. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. It's a great point. It's a, You least. saw frustration with him after Washington. He left the court early, Grant. Yes. And so if the Kings do not make the playoffs, and again, I think they will, but if they don't, they, they don't don't automatically assume that Malik Monk's coming back. I mean, you'll you'll worry about that in the off season. But I'm just saying, 100%. if if they do if they're not sixth and they lose the play in and they're not in, do not just automatically assume he's coming back. It's a good point. I don't think we'll get there if the Kings keep playing this style, kind of grind it out. But I'm looking at happens, the schedule. That schedule. I know pretty, it's a good point. It's a weird trip, but hey, you said earlier, you know, just something it, it's weird about the end of the season. Well, we thought it was weird. The Kings went out on a seven game trip earlier. It's been kind of a weird year and they've embraced it. 
I, I uh, be, before we get to Baki, and we'll get to Baki over in Serbia in just a minute, uh, I want to tell you about Fosters and Paws because they got a lot of puppies that are available for adoption currently. They are a group of animal advocates. They are very passionate at what they do. And uh, in addition to uh, everything else, they work with families and teach the benefits that uh, the young people can see with really their entire life by having a pet. And so they, they're very comprehensive in what they do. But right now, many puppies available for adoption. Just go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. They're great at what they do. Again, they are very passionate and a group of animal advocates. All right. You ready to go across the pond? Yeah, let's do it. Let's bring in our buddy, Baki. It's been a while. How you doing tonight? Hey, Baki, how are you? I'm fine. It's been a while. How are yes, you guys? good. That's good to have you on, man. We missed you. Yeah. It's good to have you on. I miss you too. So uh, let me. I think the first game we should say all players were very, very good. We should give them all credit, big time. And yep. okay, maybe only Sabonis was excellent, really. Uh, so Davion nothing to add good. to it. Sorry, Davion was pretty good tonight. Keegan Murray too. Yeah, Keegan Murray, you can you can you can see Keegan Murray changing the game. So not only waiting to shoot the three, but moving aside, waiting for 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 the pass, and of course getting into the paint, going to for slam or two. So something something's really happening maybe on the training and with the coaching. So this, as as Grant already said, this is looks like um, now going from good to very good i should say so no negatives tonight i don't i don't i no, just see one none. one single one single one no I, single I didn't one. see any i didn't see any negatives really tonight i thought just based on everything else being on the road coming home um i thought this was a very thorough 48 minute victory uh, i was very impressed with this game tonight so grant do you think they maybe for for the tomorrow's game do you think they are maybe a little bit tired so you expect uh, Dallas to be a favorite so is that the, I do. is that the reason yes that's the reason i like the way the kings match up with dallas and i'm very well aware that dallas is a different you know brian made a good point that this kings team is a different team than the kings played dallas earlier in the year but dallas is a different team than sacramento saw so this is going to be a very interesting week, not only tomorrow's game, but the second game against the Mavs. These are big, big games. Both teams know it. And personally, I don't think the Kings are going to win two, and I don't think Dallas is going to win two. I think they'll split this, the two games. I really do. Yeah, but I would I would like to split. If if, we, if we're going to split, I would like to, to see. I mean, if I am somebody from the Kings, I will, I will push for tomorrow all hundred percent for the tomorrow's game because it will be maybe a little difficult if you lose the game tomorrow then you're going down you're going you're going behind the dallas and yeah that that could be the first time we're we're behind the dallas and i don't know it can be a really difficult maybe well they were to, behind dallas last week i mean that i mean it, it, we, we got to be very careful that 24 hours from now, we're not making too much out of what happens tomorrow night. I mean, it is a big game, but it is one game. And there's another big game right after that in a couple of days. So I'm going to say this before it happens because I don't want to be, you know, on the post game tomorrow and having people say, well, Drew, you know, no, I'm telling you right now, we all need to be careful that we don't overanalyze the hell out of tomorrow's game, particularly if the Kings lose, because the Kings tomorrow, in my opinion, are facing an unfair schedule. I think it's completely unfair that the Kings have to play again tomorrow after being in Orlando 48 hours ago, playing tonight and then playing tomorrow. I think that's unfair. So I'm just telling you, if the Kings lose tomorrow, and even if they do so looking badly, I'm not going to make too much out of it. I think tomorrow is an unfair situation for Sacramento. I really do. Yeah, that's that's why if we manage to win tomorrow, it's gonna be double Huge. time. Yes. Huge. 
Yes. I don't think this team cares about that right now. I, it's just, I'm not trying to blow this up and Grant, I can kind of feel it. I'm not trying to make a big deal up of it, but I spent four years around a college basketball program with a coach that said, you've got to make more free throws than the other team takes. It happened like one time in four years. The Kings have done it two times in the last two games. And it's a team that significantly was missing free throw attempts coming into the all-star break. So I, I just know I'm kind of with you, Bucky. I think you go all in tomorrow night, Grant. Well, I'm not yeah. saying they're not going all in. I mean, I don't think I the Kings are coming out, you know, with a, a 8.5 effort. I think the Kings are going to be all in, but you know, we're, we're naive if we think that their schedule tomorrow is fair. It's not fair. I I'm think not they're buying into against- that. I, I'm not buying well, into I'm, that. It's, it's, fair, it's but... just, the, it's the facts. I'm, I'm, I've lived it. I've done it. I I've been there. I understand, but it is, it is going to be a factor. I thought it was a factor tonight, but I thought the Kings defense yeah. was good enough to overcome it. Kings yeah. did not shoot the ball well tonight. May I interrupt, interrupt uh, you too? Because this is the situation. Both of you are, are right. I mean, Grant is right because the schedule is really killing the Kings right now. Uh, they must be feeling tired for tomorrow's game and uh, on the other side they should burn if you ask me they should burn even let's win even if we surrender the second game that 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 will be my tactics i don't know i'm going to tell you right now i think the biggest key to tomorrow's game is malink monk and the bench i i really think that when we're talking Great here point. on this show tomorrow we need to be talking about Malik Monk had one of his games. And if he does, yeah. I'm going to make a prediction right now. I think the Kings will win the game. Grant, spot on. The bench yeah, was great, killed great, great in point, Orlando. And yes. yeah, great, tonight, great uh, not much better. Yep. Uh, so 47-40 outscored. Maybe maybe one, one of the crazy games that he possessed. Well, yep. it's going to be fun. I know one thing. It's probably... As anticipated as any game the Kings have played this year. I mean, it's uh, it's a big time. Okay. And the fact that they're here twice, I think it's very odd that they're playing the Mavs two games in a row with so many days off between the games. Very uh, odd. Uh, maybe I see it maybe first time. How Three days, three days between, yeah. between the games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I think I've never seen it before. The, no, the either. Kings did that in New Orleans last year, I feel like. Wasn't the uh, last year or the year before? Not last year. Not last year because they weren't Not doing the double. You're right. Off. You're right. Yeah. But I feel like there was one last year. I could be wrong. I just, Grant, I don't see I don't see what's so different about I mean, do you remember playing? Not a ton of three night, three games and four nights this late Ryan, in the season. Ryan, when I when I was doing the games, the Kings played four games in five nights. We played okay. four games in five nights in three different time zones. The guys yeah. were accustomed to it, and they when the team was here's the bottom line. We can talk about all you want about travel rest. Good teams always seem to overcome that. Like you know the teams yes. that win sixty plus games. Like the Kings did in the early 2000s, the Lakers, the Bulls with Michael, the Celtics and what they're doing, even though they had a bad, bad loss tonight. The, the bottom line is good teams don't give a damn about whether you get in at five in the morning and had a mechanical, have to travel the day of the game. Good teams are, are <laughs> they, they get it, they're right? They get through all of that. But uh, the Kings to me are a good team, but they're, they're, we, we've seen, their lapses all too often this year, okay? And I, I'm i not ready to just say, well, they're not going to have any more lapses this year. That's fair. To this That's point, fair. It's, been, it's been consistent, the consistent lapses. Why would I think just because there's only 10 games left in the season, they're not going to occur anymore? Well, I would argue they haven't been occurring like they were. I understand they just had a very bad loss to Washington, but um, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's with the same regularity, or at least it feels like when you were watching a Kings game before, it's like a wooden roller coaster like this. And now it feels a lot more like it should, like that. Sometimes a little one of these, but that's got to give me confidence because Grant, Baki, this is when you're supposed to be playing your best basketball of the year. Grant, do you think uh, missing Lyles and Herder tomorrow can can be difficult for the for the Kings? Yeah, I do because, think it's because difficult the, because the opponent is. I think it's going to be difficult for the rest of the year. Um, I think that 
it's uh, going to have an impact on these games, particularly that long road trip where they got to go to New York, Boston, Brooklyn, and Oklahoma City. Now, I can't say for sure that Lyles is going to be out then, but I I, I believe he will. Uh, you, the, and the other part that we're not talking about, the Kings right now cannot, cannot afford even a, a tweak of an ankle where they lose yes. a guy for one or two games. They just can't. They have to be very lucky the rest of the way because they're very thin right now. Very thin. It kind of, it kind of feels like that halftime show where the guy's balancing all the plates <laughs> on the big sticks. <laughs> just like yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, you see so. what happened in, in the NBA right now is you, you have uh, two very good teams like New Orleans and Clippers. They are missing guys. And do you see what happened? Uh, I mean, what is happening is they are losing a game or two, maybe in the last New five New Orleans seasons. hasn't lost yet. They lost, they lost Brandon Ingram in the Orlando game. They lost that game, but they, they haven't lost since. They won the yeah. next night against Miami, and then they won again their second game. Now, I do think it will have an impact, but they have played very well without Brandon Ingram, which is surprising to me. Yeah, because they are, they are in the rhythm, but I don't know. Everything is possible. Yep. Hey, Baki, always great having you on with us. Uh, thank you very much. Your insight is always very enjoyable, and we we certainly like when you take the time to call. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Like the beam. Thanks, Baki. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, like he brings beam. up a lot of good points. Ryan, you bring up a lot of good points. I mean, I'm not sitting here making excuses before the game starts tomorrow. Yeah, no, I got you. But, what I, but, but the, here's what I am saying, and maybe people are misconstruing. What I'm saying is... If the Kings lose tomorrow, I'm not coming on the show and ripping them. Okay, because yeah. before before the game even starts, I feel that tomorrow is an unfair schedule for the Sacramento Kings. And so if they lose and if they don't play well, I'm not going to make too much out of it. I'm going to blame it on the schedule more than anything. I like the way the Kings match up with Dallas, even though both teams are different when they now than when they played. I mm -hmm. still like the Kings matching up with Dallas. And if mm -hmm. the Kings lose tomorrow, I believe they'll win the second game. Okay? If the Kings win tomorrow, I believe they're going to lose the second game. I don't think either team's winning both games this week. I think it's a one and one deal. And I'm okay with that because if it's one and one, the Kings then own the tiebreaker over Dallas, and I'm fine with that. Bingo. Uh, just do enough to get that done. And um, I mean, they're good teams. It would not be a bad loss as you laid yep. out. So very good points, partner. All right. Hey, before we get to uh, uh, Zach, I want to tell you uh, about the great development in Calusa, Ryan. It is yes. Sunrise Landing. And if you go to calusasunrise.com, you can check out everything that they have to offer. Six models to choose from. No Melaroos, no homeowners. Uh, great uh, access to the major arteries like I-5 and Highway 20. It's from Blazona Development. And again, it's Sunrise Landing. And if you go to calusasunrise.com, you can get all the information. That is calusasunrise.com. Sunrise Landing. Check it out. You guys have said such great things about Sunrise Landing that I'm in my wife's ear, and I love Elk Grove. See? Good. I know, love it. I know. Work, keep working. I, I love the reads. All right, we're 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 going to uh, the NBA guru. What's up, Zach? Welcome in. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, got some good points here for the game. Um, got some points to talk about for how when we play bad and got a little – point of I want to make uh, that you guys have been making and I'm kind of against it but let's just start with the good stuff the good stuff I always got to start almost every call with Keon I just got to give him props just for being yeah good. You called and it. Uh, the one thing with Keon that I think people gotta gotta his defense has been absolutely amazing but the thing that makes it pop the thing that makes him special is he's making his open threes he, he he's he's just making his threes when he's open he's getting them in and that's that that's that keeps them in the game or else, you know, yeah, you can play great, play great D, but if you're going to be a zero on offense and just be open every time and not do anything, that's a problem. Yeah, uh, Zach, Zach, we have to be careful though, to compliment an NBA player playing shooting guard for making an open three. And that's the difference between when this team's going to take the next step. You're going to have a guy in that position 
they can go out and create his own offense. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I know this is going to be a little uh, weird, but you know, shooting guard it doesn't even have to be a shooting guard that a shooter that in these days with the positionless ball. Just True. gotta, you know. But anyway, they, I want to give props to Davion. I always kind of uh, be bad on him, but you know, he played a great game today in the first half, especially. I love seeing what he did. He went to the uh, to the lane, uh, made a couple threes. He, great, great stuff. I know uh, we got outscored. I think you guys brought up forty seven to forty from the bench, but the bench played well. I, I think we only scored thirty seven points a game from the bench, and we and we beat that. Um, just everyone contributed a little bit of everything, a little bit of everyone. I, and Len played a great game, just right in the great spots, uh, rebounding. Uh, you know, just just hitting the dunker spot. That was great to have. Um, Keegan chucking the ball a lot. I liked it. I want to keep him seeing, taking a lot of shots. The guy can shoot. That guy could be the shooting guard, if you know what I mean. Um, but uh, well, he didn't shoot the ball that well tonight. He, he didn't. He didn't. But th- th- I mean, he, I mean, he was three of eleven from three. That's not good. It's not. But just, I just want, I just like seeing him being a little bit more aggressive, taking more shots. You know, sometimes he's a little passive this year. So I just like seeing him. You know, just. Be a leader in taking shots sometimes. If he's, I know he didn't play that great, but um, just seeing some development there. Uh, Want to say we also didn't. I don't think uh, you guys can correct me, but I don't think we shot that well. So it was nice that our defense kind of uh, yep. played today. So uh, I know you always brought up uh, Grant. You know, some, if the Kings don't shoot well, uh, it's over. But today we played some good D and we got the W there. Yep. I and I made well, that point difference. earlier, Zach. This is one of the few games this year where the Kings won when their shot wasn't there. And I look at that as a real positive. Absolutely. Well, they got to the free throw line 28 times, guys. They weren't doing yep. that most of the season. Yep, that's very good point. That's yep. a great um, I want to also say for one of the points that um, you guys uh, always bring up this year for Fox and his, and his uh, talking to the refs, I get it. I do see a little bit more. I don't know if it's just because I'm looking for it more. But to be fair, last year he had 14 technicals. This year he's only at seven. So if we're going to just look at technical wise, you know, he hasn't been wrapping to the refs that much compared to 14 tees of last year. You watch the the game tomorrow and then get back to me. You think it's going to be Doncic and Fox crying to the refs all game? Well, I I don't think Fox will be doing it as much, but Luca will. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I know Luca is probably one of the leaders in the league for, for T. So it's definitely going to, he's going to get one or two, at least the next two games. Um, I also want to bring up uh, some points of when we play bad. I think the, 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 there's four keys that I think that are make it happen why we play bad. Defensive efforts, number one. Uh, comfort playing slower is number two. Um, I think in the fourth quarter when we let teams back, uh, back, I think we play a little bit slower, and that kind of just gets the other teams back in a little bit. Uh, three is Monk, Fox, Sabonis not being as aggressive as they could be or should be. And uh, number four, scheme versatility. I think when things just get in a rut, we don't have some change-ups that we can really just throw in there, some little sprinkle or wrinkle that you can, don't. That can uh, bring us back. We'll see. Um, thank you, Zach. Good hearing from you, buddy. And tomorrow's going to be fun. I think everyone's looking forward to it. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you. I mean, that is going to tomorrow's going to be a, a a fun game, but these the, the the whole season, the rest of the way is going to be fun because every game oh, yeah. is like a playoff game. I mean, every game right now is like a playoff game. This has felt like the playoffs since game twenty five to go in the season. Yeah, since it, the it's been a lot break. of fun. Yeah, and yeah. I just want to say something really quick to Zach's point about letting up in the fourth quarter. Mike Brown has always been one to call a very quick timeout, but I haven't yeah. seen quick timeouts when teams throw a different defense at him, like the zone. And that's what threw the Kings off in the fourth quarter. Sure and the did. Kings had a stretch of really bad basketball offensively. So I think that's part of the issue, Zach. I just wanted hey, to give Zach say- his due. I'm sorry. In a minute, I, I already jumped Zach on this. Uh, Gold Country Veterinary and Hospital, they are a full service veterinarian hospital located in the foothills roseville and the greater sacramento area all right they do dentistry surgery wellness care they're dedicated to urgent care when your pet needs to be seen they are available advanced internal medicine full surgical care from spay neuter packages to advanced orthopedic procedures they have the most modern technology and they are very proud of their pain management protocols for maximizing faster recovery for their surgical and dental patients. Gold Country 
Veterinarian Hospital in Auburn. When your pet needs to see the best, not going to do better than Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. Good, Good enough night. to take your kids there. <laughs> well, now listen. We got to be careful. I don't want. I don't want Doctor <laughs> Griff this having you know parents bringing their kids in thinking they're going. To, we got to be careful here because unfortunately we live in a world where people believe what they hear now. You know. Well, some people call their pets their kids, so I think we're safe. I, I think we're safe. Okay, hey, we're safe. You know what? You know where... Oh, go ahead. That's very true. Very true. <laughs> You know where we're not safe? We're going to have a riot in the chat if we do not get some of these chat messages up. Go they ahead. are not happy with us. They're hitting me with some roam lines. Yeah, do we really need a chat line? Sign the uh, text line that nobody uses. So, all right, let's get them in, Napes. All right, so uh, we got we got a couple here. Uh, Clutch Time, Monk, and Savage Sabonis. We are a playoff threat. Got to make the playoffs first. Uh, I don't like the Pels. They're pretty good. They're very good. And they have owned Sacramento. And they have one more one more game coming up uh, in the last week of the season. Uh, all right, I, what about getting Barnes going early uh, against Dallas? I, I would agree with you. I think he can be a real big piece to this game tomorrow. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I would get him going, and same thing goes for Keegan Murray. I think the more you get them going, you open up the lanes for De'Aaron and the other guards. All right. Uh, again, you know, I don't know why people keep talking about Sasha and Edwards need more time instead of Duarte. Are you all aware that Sasha's been out for, what are we going on now, over a month? February 12th. February 12th. Okay. So six weeks. I mean, don't even talk about Sasha until he's playing. I mean, I, I don't even know why people continue to bring his name up. I really don't. Well, because I mean, he's when he comes closer back, than he has been. It makes well, sense you bring it up. You don't have Trey Lyles. You you need to I, I understand, but there. but you're you're talking about a guy that wasn't really playing that well before he hurt his ankle. Okay. Correct. Who had been unbelievably sporadic and inconsistent. And now and now fans think that oh gee, Sasha's coming back. Oh boy, that's going to be great. Based on what? He wasn't great when he know. played. I think you might be reading the temperature different. I don't think it's so much like Sasha is going to be great when he comes back. It's like we need Sasha back. That's the way I take it. Well, it always helps to have an, uh, more bodies. I, I would agree, and it also helps to have someone that is a really good shooter. And he's a really yes. good shooter, but he's a great. He hasn't shooter. played in a long time. You know, and he we'll to see. be fair, I don't think he's gotten a fair sample size yet to make a judgment on him as a player. I agree. I do believe his sample size, and I'm not judging him. Oh, no. I, what did I say? What did I say this summer? And what did I say during training camp? And what did I say during the beginning of the year when he wasn't playing? I said, said I talked to three European scouts, and they all told me the same thing. They said nothing yeah. special, not a starter. He can play in the league, but he's going to be a, a bench player and he'll be a role player. And that's where he's at. And that's OK. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you have 13 players on your on the bench, including the five starters for a reason. All right. It's called a basketball team. You need players that don't start. So if that's what his role is going to be in his career, that's OK. Make the best out of it. Yeah. And if I'm the Kings, I don't know what the rules are around this. I would be sending him to Vegas this summer to get some run with that young core down in he Stockton do that. and whoever they draft. Um, because I, I think Sasha can move his feet. We saw him play some decent defense this year, certain times. Yeah, but there's a thing coming up this summer. I don't know if you're aware of it. It's called the Olympics. Yeah, what's the Olympic? Is that the square logo? Wait, Olympics? <laughs> That's the Olympics. Our our good friend Nico is going to be working with NBC Sports for the Olympics. Yes, I do know that. He's going to be uh, in there. Uh, Stanford, Connecticut, uh, where they do a lot of the broadcasting from. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the events are not on site. And, and I'm talking about the announcers. They do it from a studio in Connecticut. And uh, yeah, he's going to be doing some work. There. I'm very happy for him. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Follow yeah. him. He's a good uh, listen. Yes, yeah, Serbia versus the USA is coming up. They're in the same pool. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. There's no question about that. All right. Uh, some final thoughts. Uh, really good win. Surprising yep. win from this team, a game that both of, both of us said we thought the Kings should concede. So, um, very happy to see them get it done. Napes. Tomorrow is going to be a good one. We are looking forward to it. 
6.30, this man right here will have the pregame show. Jerry Reynolds joins us coming up at halftime, and we'll have the postgame show. Nico checking in. Thank you, guys. Great show. Well, we appreciate you staying up uh, to watch us in uh, Syracuse. Nico, by the way, has been doing a lot of hockey play-by-play, and I've been uh, listening to his work. And Uh don't be surprised if you hear Nico doing big-time hockey here in the near future. He's good. Does a very good job. A man after your heart, huh? Calling hockey. I love announcing hockey. It was my favorite sport to announce. I love doing hockey. I love it. I I still actually will be sitting on my couch watching hockey, and I'll actually – even to this day, announce the games as oh, I'm right. sitting on the couch as a 64 year old. You know, I I can't follow the puck on TV. I, I like oh, watching hockey. Okay. It's hard to follow the puck sometimes. Yeah, well, I you got to you got to understand the game. But I exactly. used to. Uh, they used to make me get up in front of the school, and I told you announce a hockey game. Yes. I would do like the Rangers and the Bruins mock play by play when commercials they had too. Pizzito and they had John Rattel and Vic Hatfield and. Ride your bear. And I mean, that was a lot of fun. I used to love doing that. I used to love doing the uh, play by play back then. Bobby Orr, you know, one of the great hockey players of all time. Babe Hodge. Nico has no idea what I'm talking about. Those players back you then. Lost in that me era. At, you lost me after Orr, but uh, you did the commercials too for the school. What was yes. the beer company? Uh, Schaefer Beer. Yeah. <laughs> what was the, what's the logo it was good was so uh, good you got it like now this from Schaefer beer you know for just about every kind of beer you can aim there's one beer that stands a cut above the other and that beer is Schaefer comes on first beer bright first beer rewarding every beer through from your first frosty glass to your very last and that's Boom. the brother and that's the beer you've got coming you know, or something. So Love yeah, I it. still remember that. Yeah. And then it was, uh, it was uh, the Knicks also, and the Rangers had, uh, and B- Marv Albert, and by Ford, when America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. You know, and we, so yeah. I, you, and then Eastern Airlines, the Wings of Man, and the second largest passenger carrier in the free world. Well, they're not anymore. They're out of business. But uh, yeah, I used to do. Well, I used to add the commercials and everything. Absolutely, that's yeah. so great. You imagine if YouTube was around back then? Oh my! The gosh. little videos that would exist right. of uh, little napes. Oh, it'd be like you ever seen Rudy when he's up on the stool and he's doing the coach. We're gonna fight, fight, fight. I could just. I used see to love breakaways. Just... My favorite call to announce in hockey was a breakaway because very often they just happen. You know, so you'll be announcing a game and they wind it around over to McPhee now, a left wing feed over to McClellan. He loses it. Here's the breakaway. He's across the line. He dinks, he shoots, score. You know, like, so you're, yeah. it's like you're just going and then all of a sudden, oh, we got a breakaway. Here's the breakaway. He's across yeah. the line, makes the move, you know, so yeah. Oh, anyway, yeah. sorry, Absolutely. I got carried. Nico, you see what you're doing to me, man? <laughs> well done, Nico. But that's pretty good. That Those, th- those commercials were from, like 1969, 1970, 71, and I still remember them word for word. That's that's great. I love it. Just like I'll always remember where you're from. I will always remember. Hey, and and Baki would like this. When I was a kid, my grandmother's apartment in Forest Hills, New York, you could see Forest Hills where they used to have the U.S. Open before they oh. moved to the National Tennis Center. The U.S. Open Tennis Championships were played at Forest Hills. And I was there as a kid. Bucky might appreciate this. I watched Ely Nastasi play as a kid. And I watched Jimmy Connors and Chris Everett play at Forest Hills as teenagers, okay, at the U.S. Open. Teenagers. So as a kid, I was at Forest Hills every year for the U.S. Open. Not for the finals, but the first week. And we would go and sit in the outer courts, and my dad would take my brother and me. And uh, I remember Forest Hills vividly as a kid in the 60s. And they played on grass at Forest Hills. And you can still see Forest Hills when you're on the Long Island Railroad and you're going towards um, from New York to Jamaica. If you're on the right side, you still pass Forest Hills. You can see all the tennis courts, and you can still see the old stadium where they used to play the matches. Uh, It's a lot of history there. That's yeah. so cool. I, I can't imagine anybody else growing up in a cooler, like, sports atmosphere. You went oh. to football games. You went to basketball games. You yep. went to hockey games. The yep. U.S. Open. I mean, my goodness. Yep. Uh, the Milrose games, Bert the track Xavier. and field, the Milrose games at Madison Square Garden, the track and field. 
And Marty LaQuarrie was a miler at Villanova. And m m people might remember Marty LaQuarrie because he does a lot of the has done a lot of the announcing over the years in the Olympics uh, for uh, the track and field events. Marty LaQuarrie running for Villanova on the short track was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen because you would say, oh, he's not going to win this race. But every year and he was there for four years. Right before the bell lap, it would be like a rocket was turned on on his backside, like he was shot out of a cannon. And yep. all of a sudden, he would go into his kick, and then the bell lap. Oh, I mean, it was like a sports car accelerating. And he would win every year. I still remember to this day the great Milrose games that we went to, the track and field at Madison Square Garden. We went, my dad took us every That's year to crazy. that. Yeah. That is so cool, man. I, not to call you man, but wow. Well, wow. they can call me whatever you want, but that was uh, that was incredible. And then, yeah, I told you, watching Pete Maravich play as a uh, a stud at LSU, he came mm -hmm. onto – now think about this in college basketball. Think about this. He came onto the floor before any of his teammates for warm-ups and put on a dribbling exhibition for all the fans at Madison Square Garden. That's think about that for a cool. That's yep. pretty darn cool. Probably All right, so I got carried away. I'm sorry. I no, it's away. okay. It's okay. So, yes, I do know the Olympics. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to Nico. Well, that, Thanks to yeah. Nico, only because it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, yeah. uh, tomorrow, this is the place to be. 6.30 pregame, halftime show with uh, Jerry Reynolds, postgame show. We want your calls. We'll do a better job of getting to the chat messages and everything else, okay? And then we'll do the text line. We'll We'll do it all. All right, we will do it all. What do I like do better, all. tennis or hockey? Well, I like hockey better. But, I mean, I was at some great, great, great matches. I was at a match where Jimmy Connors was down uh, two sets to love and down 5-2 to Paul Harhus on a night match. And the fans started going crazy. And Connors came back and won the third set and won the match. And I remember walking out of the National Tennis Center. It was like 2.30 in the morning. Seriously. It's a late night was, on the East Coast. It Woo. was great. It was great. That All is right. so hey, cool. Uh, thank you for your work, uh, Ryan. Thank you, buddy. My pleasure. And we got a quick turnaround. And to everyone else, thank you very much for your support. We greatly appreciate it. Tomorrow, Kings, Mavs, let's light that beam again.